Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here. Sorry for the bright sunshine. We don't get sunshine very often here in Wales, so I'm going to enjoy it while we've got it. Also, please excuse my hands. I've been doing art journaling this morning, so just a little bit messy. Now, most of you know me as Kerry the Crafter. I'm also known as Kerry the Cake. I'm on two design teams and I do travel the world a lot demonstrating and going to shows. And a lot of people ask me, Kerry, how do you keep track of everything? How do you keep all your design ideas separate from the cake, separate from the craft? Well, I make these. Now, um, they're just little booklets I make myself. Um, some people would probably call them travelers, notebooks. Um, they're just things I make out of scrap paper, scrap, scrap card. Um, as you can see, like this is the one I use for my digitals. This is one for creating my backgrounds. These are the stamping elements I'm working on. As you know, I'm one of the designers at KTC Designs. So this is actually all of my design ideas that I'm working on currently for next year. These are the craft videos. And yes, this video is on this book. And these are some of the stenciled elements where they're not a background, they're actually an element. Now, I can't flick through these because obviously if I flick through these, what would happen? You'd see everything. So let's just move, carry the crafter out of the way a second. So what I'll do is I'll flip these over and you can see them from behind. So I do a mixture like this is lined paper. Uh, this is plain paper. So maybe I want one for sketching. What's well, this one? This is another plain paper one. This one, oh, okay, there you go. I had some coffee dyeing on the go, so I made that one out of coffee dyeing. Oh, this one is also coffee dyeing. Oh, and this one is graph paper or grid paper. So they're really handy. It means that if I'm going on a journey, I can throw them in my luggage, throw them in my carry-on. I can pick up one and read through it. And usually just by flicking through it, it actually gives me other ideas. And then I keep adding to the list. And it's just the way that I don't lose things from my memory. I just keep them here. So I want to show you how to make one. So we're going to actually make this one. Now, I've put in multi different papers in this one because I'm not sure what this one is for. And whenever I've got some stuff on the go, I do tend to make spares, like these are a few spares. I sometimes give them as gifts to friends as well. They're just a nice way to use things. Now, I am on a couple of design teams and recently I was in the States working and a package arrived from Craft Creations and I wasn't able to get the design piece done and I wanted to make this video just to make sure that I did do something with the papers and they are absolutely beautiful. This is the pack that arrived through my door. Now, it's called Autumn Hues. Now there are two different sorts of Autumn Hues. I think one is flowers and cardstock, and this was the toppers and card collection. So that's what's in the kit. Obviously a lot in the kit. This is who they're by. So if you go to www.craftcreations.com, you'll find them there. And this is the set I'm using. The reason I was excited about this set is because if you're anyone who does your own journal covers, your own travel notebooks, your own travel journals, any of those things, you're almost looking for paper or card stock that has a really nice design on the right hand side of the card or the right hand side of the page because then that becomes one of the features on your covers. As I said, sorry about the shadow. I can't move a wall. So let's just open this pack and have a quick look through it. I will do this quickly because then I want to get on and show you. So this, these are some of the toppers. I mean, I absolutely love that one. As you can see, all very beautiful. Now these could just become journaling cards in themselves. Isn't that stunning? I mean, let's see if I can get that any closer for you. How beautiful is that? I love this color green. So if you're a card maker, that could become a card front. It could be a tuck spot. It could actually become a journal card like this one here. I could fold this in half and it becomes a little notebook that I slip into a pocket. So those are exciting. Then we come to the die cut toppers. Now all of these just pop straight out. They're beautifully, beautifully cut. All nice and clean. Look at all the detail in these things. Some big, some small. So again, these can be used in journaling. They could be used in card, card making, scrapbooking, all of these. And they really, really do pop out really easily. It would if I actually caught hold right side of the paper. And when I do this, I usually get a little emery board and I just sand down the edges so those little nubs aren't left on there. So you get those in the pack. 
You also get a couple of sheets of sentiments, just little banners that you could stick on something. So I love those, just handy. I'm probably not going to use those currently, but they're certainly going into my stash for the future. And then you get all of the pre-die cut tags in all of the complementary colours. And I love lovely rich colour to go with all of the cardstock in here. So if you want to make some really quick and easy tags, just use one of these. Tickle them up with something and they'd be fabulous. So I'll put those to one side. And then we're on to the cards or the paper stock. I love these. So this is what I mean. So if you're someone who makes journal covers, if I fold them in half, how beautiful is that for a cover? Or if I'm doing a traveler's notebook, how beautiful is that feature? So I believe you get three of each design. So that's the first one. Again, look at that. Isn't that perfectly spaced for a traveler's notebook? Or if you're going to do a journal cover with it, top right hand corner, loving that. So there's three of those. Here we are, I love this. I absolutely love this design. Love this. So again, you've got it for a journal cover. If you are doing a traveler's notebook, it works there. But this will probably get cut off because you'd be having it nine inches tall anyway. So not to worry, just if, if that is in the background, you can always collage over the top. Hello, how perfect is that? There you go, you want to do a fall a journal, there you go. If you want to do a traveller's notebook about your travels through France looking at sunflowers, there you go. And don't ask me where that thought came from, it just came from nowhere. Um, just a nice background, and I really quite like some of these backgrounds. This one for me, a little bit too busy, but you know what, if I was using it on tags or pockets, the impact wouldn't be as much, but personally, I'm a bit of a minimalist. You wouldn't believe it looking at my work, but I am. And I like this, but I maybe even put some white gesso on it just to knock it back for me. Just a tad too bright, but you know what? We're all different people. Again, how perfect is this one? So fold that for a journal cover or fold it in the opposite direction for a traveler's notebook. Absolutely perfect. Another three of those. And then we come into papers. Now this is not card, this is paper stock. Really good quality paper stock, however. But these are all complementary to the other designs. So beautiful, beautiful color range. Loving those. Let's put those by there. As you can see, beautiful detail. So I'm rushing a bit because I want to get on to actually doing the journal for you. So beautiful, beautiful. How gorgeous is that? That just screams Victorian vintage to me. And then these, how lovely would those be? And that's not just card stock or paper stock. It's not just for card making. It's not just for your scrapbooking. They can be for anything. I mean, lovely, lovely pieces. Of just imagine making journal cards or pockets or tags out of some of these. You get a lot in this kit, people. So let me put this to one side and I will actually show you the page that I actually used. So I used this one. Now, with the, there were three of these in the kit. Um, I obviously made the sample and in my total blue piece of fashion, and hopefully everyone knows what I mean, I've made steps so that you're not going to sit there for an hour watching me cut and paste and snip. And so, so I'm trying to do this in stages, but I loved this border and it's lovely. And as you can see, perfect for what I'm doing. However, if it was to be folded in the other way, again, perfect. Can you imagine that with a central panel on it, maybe one of the toppers, a bit of collaging would absolutely be cool. So this is what I'm going to be working with. Now, um, the cardstock obviously needs to be cut down to nine and a, nine inches tall. So I looked along here and this feature I really liked because I'm going to have some waste on here when I cut it and I want to turn it into a tag. So great way to use up stock. So I'm just going to work my way through this. Let me just get my trimmer and my pencil. So if I put this down here, sorry, it's just out of shot. I'm just measuring it to nine inches, guys. So I've just come in and I put a mark there for nine inches, which is right by there. Double check that. As they say, measure twice, cut once. Well, if you're anything like me, I'd measure three or four times. So bring in my trimmer, pop it up there. That's my mark. Snip that off. Right, so the other measurement for me would be um, normally eight and a half, but this card is only about 
just past eight and a quarter, so I don't actually need to trim it. So when I measure it, this would be nine inches, and this is eight and a quarter, or actually the width of the, width of the cardstock. If I was making this out of a 12 by 12, I'd be cutting this nine inches by eight and a half inches. But you know what, quarter of an inch is neither here nor there, and it just makes it so much easier having it this way. So let's put that to one side and look at what I'm gonna do with um, those tag ideas. So, if I take my um, scrap or the piece, I wouldn't throw it into my scrap bin because I don't need to. I'm just gonna put that down. Now it's up to you. You can either use a die for this or I'm just using just pure and simple manpower to do this one. So let's just get that tidied up. Cut that off there. Cut that off there. Sorry, it feels slightly awkward, guys, because I'm looking through the camera to actually do this, which isn't exactly how I normally work. So, and so I got the side, it's got a little bit excess on the side. Let's just trim that off there. There you go. So, a little bit of scrap. It could become a miniature tag, it could become a tight pocket, pocket, it can become whatever you wish. Now, I'm going to use my existing tag, and I'm just going to put a little dot in the middle so that I know where I want to make the hole punch for this. So bringing it through, I use one of these little ones, snap, out it comes. Then I take a couple of reinforcement rings. Now people have asked me how do I get my reinforcement rings this lovely almost coffee dyed colour. I buy white ones and then I just use my Distress inks. I usually use vintage photo and I just rub it straight over the top. They're the Tim Holtz or the ones from Ranger. And there you go, done. How easy was that? And there's there's the other two that I did as well. So as you can see, a really quick way, don't throw the scraps in the bin, turn them into something, you put them in the bin, you'll never find them again. If you turn them into something, you've got something there I could actually use later on. So let's put those to one side. So what's next on my process? I don't particularly like having sharp corners on my work. Um, I find you end up damaging them anyway. So I'm just gonna come in with my corner punch and clip them rounded. It's your choice entirely. I just speak from experience here. There you go. I can't remember which brand this is. There are umpteen out there on the market. Also, if you've got an envelope scoreboard, you've probably got a corner rounder on there to start with. Now, the next bit I'm going to talk you through, because as I said, I don't want to make this a one hour video. I just want to get on with it. I would normally put a sheet of wax paper down or plastic or newspaper, something to protect my work surface. I take a large paintbrush and I come in with my Mod Podge. I usually use matte. And I would give, oops, not that over Griffiths, and I would normally give this one, one even coat. I'd set it aside, it usually takes about an hour to dry for me. I'd bring it back, I'd turn it over, and I would do exactly the same on the other side using my matte Mod Podge. So, if I'm going to do that, I might as well do three or four journals at a time. So, what happens is the Mod Podge actually affects the card. And you end up with something like this, which is actually feels a bit like leatherette. It's, it's a very curious thing, but what it's done is it's turned something that will tear into something that's more durable. Let's put that to one side again. Let's pop that over there. So now I've got my cover made. I just need to do the obvious. I'm going to fold it over just to make sure that I've got it straight. Put my thumb along the bottom. Come in. Now, I tend to use my thumb, I don't use a bone folder for this, um, but you could quite easily use a bone folder. So, how quick was that? I've made my cover. Right, let's talk about papers and what I do with the papers. Let's put that to one side, put it in this little waiting room, there you go. Now, for these, um, I've chosen an assortment of papers. This is lined, this is plain, I believe there's some, I could have sworn I put some graph paper in here. Well, I thought I'd put graph paper in here. I'm losing the plot, guys. I swore there was graph paper in here when I did this. Maybe I took it out to do something else. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. Well, if it isn't, I don't care anymore. So I've got um, 16 sheets of paper here. For me, that's more than enough. Now, you're probably gonna go, oh my God, clip the corners. I clip the corners 
after I folded them. And you'll see why in a moment. So the measurement for this is eight and a half inches tall, because that will actually give me a quarter of an inch at the top and a quarter of an inch at the bottom of the cover. And I've gone eight inches wide, because if I once I've folded that, that will give me four inches as a page. And we know that the, if the entire cover was only just about eight and a quarter, so that'll give me a little bit of leeway either side. So something to remember is when you actually are using paper, if there's lines on it and you want it to be written on, make sure you've got your lines going in the right direction. Also, before you actually fold anything or stitch anything in, make sure that you know which is the nine and which is the eight. It's very similar in size, so make sure you don't lose that one. So again, I'm gonna fold this over. I actually want the line on the outside, so there you go, fold it over. Fold it over, give it a good crease down the back. Now you're probably seeing why I didn't clip my corners first of all. So because I've got this piece that's going to be obviously where all of the folds are, you're always going to encourage this to come out a little further. So if I was to put this in my book, it will stick out just marginally. I'm OCD guys, I like to make sure things are nice and clean cut. So let me get my cutting mat in here. Take that out of the way. I'll get myself a nice right angle ruler. And I'm going to line that up so it's at the edge of the inside page. Then I'm going to take a very sharp knife and I'm going to run it down and trim the pages down. Now, um, if you've got a rotary cutter, this works perfectly well for this. My rotary cutter at the moment is need of sharpening. So we're going to go old school and we're going to use a craft knife. Let me just tidy that top edge up because that's bothering me. So I'll put that to one side, move this over. And as you can see now, all of the edges of my pages are perfectly even. And when they go in the book, I now have that much of an area which is going to protect the pages. So let's just take some of this garbage out of the way. There you go. Now, the next thing I do before I go any further is I go through and I actually round corner all of the pages. I usually do it the same corner as I've done on that one. And I've just realized why there's no graph paper in this or check it paper, because I did one already. There you go. And this is where the graph paper is. I don't mind if the holes are in there. Remember guys, this isn't a journal I'm keeping. This is just something for keeping my memory. So here you go. This is a finished one. I've got plain paper, I've got graph paper, I've got lined paper, I've put them all in, I've done exactly the same process and just trimmed the edges. Now for me the next stage, which is really important, is you need to put this into your cover, find the center of your signature, and this is called a signature for anyone who's new to journaling, line all the pages up. Now the next bit takes a little bit of jiggling around, I usually use these little clips, and I want to clip them so that the spine of this is really tight against the spine of the cover. So I'll try and do this and then I can show you. So as you can see, this is pulling it towards that cover, but I need to make sure it's equally pulled against that one as well. So I'm pushing with my thumb here to make sure the paper's all the way over. That one, I'm gonna loosen this one off because I've got a feeling it isn't tight enough in there. And then I'm going to put my other one in here. Then the next thing I do is just clip these down. If these are sticking up, they're going to get in my way when I'm sewing. So now I've got this tightly pushed all the way to the back. That will give me where the spine needs to be. Next process, I need to put some holes in it. Now, there are gadgets out on the market that you can sit your book into to pierce through. I've got an old book here and I actually just fold the book up slightly so when I push down it goes through, straight through the spine. Now because I make these books individually I don't have a template for the holes, I just do them. So I'm going to come down probably about half an inch from the top and I'm going to push right down. This pokey tool is called an awl or an owl, I can never remember how to say it. So I've done one hole at the top, one hole at the bottom, I usually look and put one roughly in the middle and I'm going right through into the book and then I do one halfway 
and I do one halfway here. And as I say, I just eyeball these guys. These are not for sale. These are not perfect. I just want to make sure they're usable. I look from the other side just to make sure these holes are nice and clear. And I poke my pokey tool back through the other side just to make sure that when I put the needle through here, I'm not going to hit any obstacles, which hopefully I won't. Right, so that's got me to that stage. Let's move that out of the way. Now, I have one spare clip and I have that on purpose. Doesn't matter about the color. That means nothing to nobody, man or beast. It's just for me. Um, I'm going to use a large-ish need needle. I can't say it's a specific needle. It's just a large-ish needle. Um, probably a darning needle will work or even a cross-stitch needle. I've got heavy-duty thread here. Um, I know most people for journals will use the waxed thread. I'm just using thread. Before now, I've even used dental floss. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four times the height. I'm take my little pair of scissors to snip off the excess. Thread my needle. Let's see if I can thread this first time on camera, shall we, guys? There you go. All threaded. That was luck, I didn't tell you. So... Pull this all the way so the ends are together. Now this is the bit that I like to do, is I like to actually just clip this to the cover of my book. And I like to do that so that when I'm sewing I don't pull it all the way through. Now I'm going to do a pamphlet stitch or my version of a pamphlet stitch. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to push the needle through the middle hole. Pull it reasonably tight. I'm going to come back through the second hole. Make sure it's not knotted. Back through the next hole. And then I'm going to work back on myself. I'm going to come through the second hole I went through. Now each time I'm giving a little bit of a tug, I want to make sure I'm keeping these stitches nice and tight. Through the middle hole again. Now I've come to the second from the top hole. As I said, excuse me fumbling guys. I'm actually doing this looking through an iPad, so not the easiest of things. Going through the top hole. Back through the remaining hole. Now as you can see that means that every one of these has got a piece of stitching between them. I've been pulling it reasonably tight as I go. This brings me back to the centre. At this point, I can take that clip off. I usually come through here and I'll thread that through there. And at this point, I cut my needle off because I no longer need it. I also take away these um, clips and I do that purely because as I tighten this up, I want this to go as close as I possibly can to the cover. So take both sides of this, give it a bit of a tug, just to make sure it's all nice and... I can't pick that up, come on, there you go. So it's nicely gripped. I then tie it in one knot in the middle, and give it a bit of a tug. It looks tight there to me. I'm having trouble picking stuff up today, guys. What's wrong with me? There you go. And then I'll give it one more tug to secure it. Now it's up to you. Some people tie a bow. Some people leave these long. I just tend to snip them so they're nice and clean. So there you go. And that gives me the way I keep myself organized. So as you can see, I've got plain papers. I've got scrap drawing paper in here. I've got a couple of bits of graph paper in here. I've just put a mismatch in. And that's what I've done now. As I said, you could call this a traveller's notebook, and yes, there are covers you can slot these in. I've got a feeling they might be called Midori's, but don't quote me on that one, because goodness knows what I'm talking about half the time. But these are really cute and handy. These are the sort of thing you could just throw in a handbag, throw in, throw in your computer case, put them in a wallet, whatever you want. As I said, I just use these up. Now these here were actually just some 12 by 12 cardstock that I used. So if you've got designs that you're like, ooh, I don't know what to do with, make them into these. They are absolutely brilliant. As I said, I just keep them all the time. This one here was cardstock, and all I did was actually, I used some um, Pritt stick, and I put a napkin on the back or some tissue paper, then I mod-podged over the top of it when it was all done, and that's what gave me that pattern. But as you can see, 
really, really, really useful. I use them a lot and then what I'll do is, if I'm having a cup of coffee, I'll pick one of these up and I'll flick my way through it and go, what was I thinking? And usually that will spark another idea. I don't like to-do lists. I find them very demoralizing. I have a big long to-do list. I do two things on it and then I look at all the things I haven't got round to, not the things I've succeeded. This way I get a nice notebook I actually then come through with a green marker and when I've done it, I cross off. I'm not worried about what I'm trying to do every day as long as I'm trying to keep the design ideas and my memories in this book. So, where did I put it? There you go. So, the papers I used were Autumn Hughes, Toppers and Card Collection. This is what actually comes in the kit. Hopefully it'll focus. Yeah, maybe it'll. And this is where I got them from, www.craftcreations.com. Just make sure when you look at them, make sure you get toppers and card collection. It's this colour. I think the other one is more orange and yellow. Just one has got a lot of pre-cut, die-cut flowers in it that you can use. A great pack, but th this is the one that I used. And also I said, lots of stuff. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. Um, don't forget, guys, if you like YouTube, please like and share subscribe that would be fabulous also remember if you're looking for me on facebook i'm at kerry the crafter so that the at symbol c-e-r-i-t-h-e-c-r-a-f-t-e-r kerry the crafter and that's my facebook page um in the future there will be more youtubes from me love to see you around so hope you enjoyed that happy making happy crafting bye bye now